Beijing is striving to make its space dreams come true. But some say those ambitions pose a challenge to U.S. dominance in space travel. NASA Chief Bill Nelson seems to be taking notice, warning that when China received its first photograph back from Mars... And it is uh, a very aggressive competitor. In this special report, we examine exactly what China is striving toward and how it plans to achieve those aspirations. First, let's look at the country's achievements in recent years. It's clear that Beijing has been working hard to develop its space exploration efforts. Earlier this year in mid-June, three Chinese astronauts docked on China's space station Tiangong. It's currently under construction in Earth's low orbit and China has been sending up sections of the modular space station since May. Its expected completion is set for next year. The three astronauts will take up a three-month residence there. It's part of Beijing's plan for the station to keep Tiangong populated with at least three space travelers at all times for at least the next decade. The country didn't keep quiet about the plan either. Showing confidence in the mission's success, the astronauts' launch was shown live on TV. Authorities also held news briefings for select media outlets and arranged interviews with astronauts. The morning of June 16th, China's spacecraft Shenzhou-12 was greeted by clear skies. Following a successful launch, it rocketed through space on a 6-hour and 32-minute journey, later connecting with the space station. The deputy director of China's space program called the docking process perfect, adding that the mission fully achieved China's original goal. All three astronauts aboard the station are Chinese Communist Party or CCP members. Their ascent into space also coincided with the Chinese Communist Party's 100th anniversary, marking when it first took power in China. One video widely circulated online captured the three men saluting the occasion from the station's core module. The mission's commander, General Nie of China's military, explained that this trip to space will pose a greater challenge than those before it. That's because the astronauts need to verify crucial technology on board, on top of having to arrange the station's core module. The completion of Tiangong in 2022 will mark another milestone for Beijing's ambitious space program. That's on top of its other recent missions, like bringing samples back from the moon and landing a robotic rover on Mars. But those efforts are far from the end of Beijing's send-ups to space. Back in March, Beijing and Moscow set the stage for a new space race. The two countries released a joint announcement, saying they agreed to use their experience, equipment and technology accumulated to jointly formulate a route map for the construction of an international lunar scientific research station. Unlike Russia, China was never invited to become an international space station partner. That's due to a U.S. law that blocks NASA from working with Beijing. According to the New York Times, China and Russia's decision to team up could again trigger scientific and commercial exploitation of the moon. But this time China, instead of Russia, will be the United States' main competitor. The New York Times also pointed out that China chose Russia to join a mission that Russia had already planned in the past and is now leaving it behind. That's referencing an earlier Russian space program that stalled in recent years. But on top of the new collaboration, Last December, China became the third country to bring samples back from the moon's surface, beat only by the United States and Russia. And just half a year later, the country's first Mars rover made landfall on the red planet in Maine. The craft is named Tianwen, or Questioning the Heavens, and is comprised of an orbiter and a rover. It was launched last July from South China's Wenchang spaceport, before embarking on a nearly 250 million mile journey. The months-long trip put it in Mars orbit as it prepared to land. Soon, the six-wheeled robot touched down on the Martian surface, making China one of the few countries to get there, after the United States and the Soviet Union. According to the BBC, the Mars strategy China used was first adopted by the U.S. back in the mid-70s for its Viking landers. The idea was to orbit first and land later by sending a robot to the surface. The rover aboard the Tianwen spacecraft had been dubbed Zhurong, 
a name taken from a legendary figure in traditional Chinese culture, believed to be the earliest god of fire. The Zhurong rover boasts a notably similar structure to NASA's Spirit and Opportunity rovers from the 2000s. It weighs over 500 pounds and runs on solar energy. All of these recent accomplishments highlight a clear priority for China, strengthening the country's strategic science and technology forces. The goal was set late last year during Beijing's top economic work conference. At the time, officials stated the country's space travel progress should be furthered using the advantages of what they called the whole nation system. They also described it as a way to raise China's voice and power in the global tech race. China's space dream was first put forward by CCP leader Xi Jinping in 2013, when he called for transforming the country into a world leader in space exploration by 2045. But why put such heavy emphasis on the costly, dangerous pursuit? The head of China's lunar exploration program, Ye Pejian, explains that for China, space and lunar explorations aren't just a matter of GDP growth, but a move to defend what he called China's rights. Whoever explores the moon will utilize it. If we're able to go now but don't go, our descendants will face the same problem in space that we now have regarding the ocean. So to safeguard our space rights, we must go. He adds that the universe is an ocean. The moon is the Diaoyu Island or Senkaku Islands claimed by Japan. Mars is the Huangyan Island or Scarborough Shoal claimed by the Philippines. If we don't go when we can go now, then future generations will blame us. If others go, then they will take over. And we won't be able to go even if we wanted to. This is reason enough. Analysis from Japanese media Nikkei Asia suggests that China's space ambitions may target a U.S. vulnerability, satellites. The report warns that U.S. reliance on Earth-orbiting satellites is creating an Achilles heel for America. The article reads, beyond the scientific or military interests China's push into space is fueled fundamentally by Beijing's ambition to become a superpower and catch up with the U.S. The article quotes Kazuto Suzuki, a professor from the University of Tokyo and an expert on security in space. It requires absurdly huge costs and comes with risk to send humans into space. If the aim is purely militaristic, it would only require launching sophisticated satellites. But they build a space station, go to the moon and probe Mars because they want to demonstrate China's technological advancements to its people and the international community. Time will tell how the U.S. plans to respond to China's growth and what that expansion could mean for the future of space exploration. Now we turn to today's daily news. U.S. President Joe Biden spoke by phone with his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping for about 90 minutes on Thursday. The Chinese Communist Party leader seems to see hope now, following what was a difficult period between the two powers. U.S. President Joe Biden spoke with Chinese leader Xi Jinping on the phone for about 90 minutes on Thursday. It's the second time the two leaders have spoken since Biden took office in January. Both agreed for the need to avoid letting competition between the world's two largest economies veer into conflict. A senior U.S. official said the conversation focused on economic issues, climate change, and COVID-19. A White House statement described the discussion as broad and strategic. Chinese state media, for its part, said it was candid and in-depth, adding that President Xi said U.S. policy on China imposed great difficulties on relations between the two. Ties between Washington and Beijing have been at their lowest point in decades. The two sides have been at loggerheads over a range of issues from human rights to climate change and transparency over the origins of the pandemic. The Biden administration has signaled that its recent withdrawal from Afghanistan will give the U.S. the space to focus on more pressing threats stemming from the communist regime. Meanwhile, Beijing has been quick to seize on the U.S. failure in Afghanistan to try to portray Washington as a fickle partner. In the talk, Xi Jinping quoted a Chinese poem to describe the U.S. and China relationship as it stands now. The poem says, after endless mountains and rivers that leave doubt whether there is a path out, suddenly one encounters the shade of a willow, bright flowers, and a lovely village. It seems that Xi Jinping isn't the only one with this sentiment. Wall Street's main indexes opened higher on Friday at signs of easing tensions between the two countries. 
Even though both Xi Jinping and some on Wall Street may see the talk as a sign of reduced tensions between the U.S. and the Chinese regime, it may not be that simple. An analyst explains.